What's up, everybody? Welcome into the Fantasy Six Pack YouTube channel for this week seven waiver wire episode. I'm your host, Dylan Clemens, and I'm here to give you my top six waiver wire ads like I am every single week. But before I do that, I want to remind you guys, please hit that like button. Please subscribe if you're not already to subscribe to the channel. We really do appreciate it. And then head on over to fantasysixpack.net slash plans and become an all access member for just $10 a month, guys. You get access to our award winning rankings, access to our draft cheat sheets. We get, I mean, no, we got fantasy basketball coming up here pretty soon. You get access to our fantasy six pack Discord. You get where you get custom advice for your leagues and DFS builds and direct access to our entire team. And let me tell you, our DFS guys have been doing a very, very solid job in the discord, making our users and myself some money this season. So make sure you head on over to fantasy six pack.net slash plans and check that out. And guys, man, was it just a brutal week for the NFL and injuries and it doesn't get any easier either as we have six teams on by, we have the Carolina Panthers, Cincinnati Bengals, Dallas Cowboys, New York Jets, Tennessee Titans, and the Houston Texans all on by this week. So the waiver wire is more imperative than ever. And let's jump right into things here with the first guy I have here. And this is probably going to shock some people, but I have Jordan Mason, the running back for the San Francisco 49ers, 3.2% rostered. I thought Elijah Mitchell was going to be the RB2 in this backfield behind McCaffrey coming into the season, and guess what? I was wrong. Elijah Mitchell can't stay healthy. He was coming back from an injury this game, and Jordan Mason outsnapped him 15-7. to Jordan Mason also rushed the ball five times for 27 yards and found a, the end zone late on an eight-yard touchdown. The week previous, when it was a blowout, he ran the ball 10 times for 69 yards and a touchdown. Jordan Mason is going to be the guy in this backfield if Christian McCaffrey misses time. I'm recording this. We still don't know the severity of the bleak injury for McCaffrey, but he left the game early on Sunday, so it's definitely something to monitor. But if he misses time with everybody who's on bye week this week, you can pick up Jordan Mason and you can plug him in in, in your flex, your RB2 spot if you're short on running backs, and I think you'll – you'll feel okay. And especially they don't play until Monday night. If we don't know if CMC is going to sit out, it is imperative for the Christian McCaffrey owners to get Jordan Mason as fantasy football insurance. So you don't have to make that decision until Monday night. The next guy I want to talk to you guys about, he was talked about in the video a little bit last week, but it was split with between him and Deonta Foreman. Roshan didn't end up clearing concussion protocol. However, this week he should be good to go. And I assume he's going to take over as the lead back. Deonta Foreman, after week one, was a healthy scratch until this previous week when they were down Khalil Herbert, Travis Homer, and Roshan Johnson. Um, Johnson was backing up Khalil Herbert, who is on an IR now. Plus... Roshan is just so much better at the little things than Deonta Foreman pass blocking, catching balls out of the backfield. I watched, I watched this. I'm a bears fan. So I watched this entire game and I just was watching Deonta Foreman get blown up on pass protection and he lost snaps to Darrington Evans. Well, let me tell you guys, Roshan Johnson is better running back than um, Darrington Evans. They're going to want to get Roche on the ball, especially with a rookie quarterback most likely starting. It was announced that Justin Fields is doubtful for this game with that dislocated thumb. Um, so they're going to want to run the ball, dump it off rookie Tyson Bajan starting. So it's uh, I think it's a solid, solid matchup for Johnson as well against the Raiders. So with all the bye weeks that I've been mentioning, you can plug Roche on in and feel totally fine about it. And he's still available in, under 50% of leagues, guys. So that needs that needs to change, and I think it will this week, and he will probably end up in some people's lineups. The next guy here, he's all right, he's got my attention. I wasn't paying enough attention to Curtis Samuel on the Washington Commanders, and apparently nobody else is too, because he's only rostered in 31% of leagues. The man has finished as the top 24 
wide receiver in three straight weeks, including one top 10 week. He's quickly become one of Sam Howell's favorite targets in the passing game. He's tied in targets with Jahan Dotson, second in the team with 31, but he's out targeted Dotson 19 to 15 over the past three games. And Samuel seems to have the a nose for the end zone, finding the end zone in back to back games as well. With the bye weeks, the multitude of injuries, Curtis Samuel is a wide receiver three, no questions asked, um, especially against a giant secondary that has struggled against opposing wide receivers as well. So I would not be surprised if we see Curtis Samuel have another solid game. The next guy here, Kurt, Craig Reynolds, guys, rostered in only 3.7% of leagues. This is depending on the severity of the David Montgomery rib injury. We don't know, but he left the game early. Craig Reynolds finished it out. Remember, they're down Jameer Gibbs as well. But Craig Reynolds wasn't highlighted for something he did as a ball carrier or anything. It was he made an awesome play as a blocker. There was a pass out to Amon Ross St. Brown and somehow Craig Reynolds got in front of him and became a lead blocker and just absolutely blasted one of the defenders to free Amon Ra up to find the end zone. It was awesome. This coaching staff just loves him. And if David Montgomery misses any time, I really do think Craig Reynolds is going to slide into that role. He probably won't get a ton of the passing game work, but we don't really need him to. It, you know, Jameer Gibbs is pro could come back next week if he's healthy. He's going to slide into that passing down role. But Craig Reynolds is going to own that Montgomery role if he misses time. And with what's left on the waiver wire, I know this isn't a sexy play or anything, but with everything that's going on, you might be able to plug Reynolds into your lineup and feel okay about it. It's not an easy matchup against the Ravens this week, but he can still give you possible help at the position. Um, next guy let's talk about is Keontae Ingram. This we were wondering what the Cardinals backfield was going to look like. And we found out it wasn't good. It wasn't good without James Conner. Um, the good news for Keontae Keontae Ingram is though that he out touched Imari D Mercado 12 to three, but as it pertains to snaps, it really was a true committee where Mercado actually out snapped um, Ingram 33 to 28. It's just when Ingram's on the field, he's getting the carries. He had 10 carries for 40 yards and caught both of his targets finishing as RB 32. Once again, all these teams on by, they play the Seahawks this week, whose defense does not scare me, especially against opposing running backs that have allowed, and they've allowed the fifth most rushing touchdowns to opposing running backs this well. There was only two carries divvied out this last game that were inside the red zone per fantasydata.com. Go, go ahead and check that out. Um, they do a great job with these advanced stats and all that. Um, there are, only two carries divvied out in the red zone, and they each went to Keontae Ingram. So if they the Cardinals get in the red zone this weekend, I look for Ingram to be targeted and probably get some carries at the goal line. Maybe he falls into the end zone, and that's all you need for him to be a top 24 guy at an RB2 in your fantasy lineups. And this last, this last guy here, guys, he was my number one waiver guy last week. He's still not rostered over 50% of leagues. The only reason why he's not higher on this list is for the fact that they don't play this week. So you'd have to just pick him up and stash him on your rosters. Look, Spears out snapped Derrick Henry again. 31 to 28. And I know Derrick had a good game, busted a big run, and you know, he's still gonna do his thing. And Spears disappointed as they only got him five touches. That needs to be more, and it has been more up until this game. I think after the bye, he's going to – maybe he gets even more work. Maybe he gets 12 touches. You know, maybe he gets 10. But even just in the minimal five touches he got, he broke a big play for 48 yards that saved his fantasy week a bit to make it somewhat respectable. It still wasn't great, but, you know, things could happen, and he's – at the minimum, he is an elite handcuff with 
a job in this offense when Derrick Henry is there. Guys, he's out snapping him. It's crazy. They just need to get the ball into his hands more. Figure it out. Vrabel, you have to figure it out. He's one of the most explosive players on this offense. But all right, guys, that was my top six waiver wire ads this week. I do have a list of other players as well, but you have to head on over to fantasy six pack.net slash plans and become an all access member to be able to check those out. Um, they are behind the paywall. So, but yep, that pretty much wraps this up. Please smash that like button. Please subscribe. If I helped you out in this week or if I've helped you out in the past, I really do appreciate it. Um, if you want to drop some comments, I would appreciate that as well. We could talk about um, your thoughts as well in the comments. So, but until next week, I will talk to you guys later. Thank you.